Welcome to Get It Right, Corporate Governance in New Zealand. I'm Rebecca Gans, and I have with me today two Corporate Governance Specialists, Mark Kippenberger. Thanks for inviting me, Bex. A pleasure, and Tim White. Great to be here, Rebecca. Excellent to have you. So, what are we going to look at today? We're going to review the impacts of poor corporate governance, and then if a company wants to get started, how they proceed, and how they find the right advisor. We'll sum up, though, with top tips. Let's get started, Mark. Could you please explain the impacts of poor corporate governance? Well, Bex, frankly, a business is less likely to grow sustainably. It's a real sense of treading water. When I think about it, a couple of symptoms that can reflect on treading water, it's about variable management performance, different team members uh, have different levels of accountability, and deficient or inadequate information systems. Often that's constrained by a growing business where working capital is really consuming that available cash. A company wants to get started with corporate governance. What does that look like, Tim? Rebecca, it's important to understand that there is no standardised process. Often, in my experience with privately owned businesses, it will actually come from the identification of a particular issue. That will often lead on to, and whether this is through a discussion with a trusted advisor, that will often lead on to a, a realisation that corporate governance is, is contributing to the issue somehow. It might be causing it or exacerbating it, or on the other side, it may be just a realisation that improving corporate governance in the organisation could make a significant contribution. And if you actually realise that corporate governance can help you, how do you actually plan to make that happen? Well, it's, it's really important first to understand what corporate governance is and how, in fact, that can help you. And then it's understanding what the skills, knowledge, networks and experiences are that you're lacking in the organisation that you need to source from the market. So that they can enhance their internal abilities with external input. That's right. And it's important to structure that in the right way, to have the right discussions, get the right people on board. Is it an advisory board? Is it a statutory board? What do we do to find the right advisor? Well, Bex, Tim's already mentioned looking for advisors with skills and experience. That's obviously critical. But I think a couple of other points that are relevant in the New Zealand market is that that confidence that comes from a referral because it brings with it a level of trust. And secondly, the personality or character fit. So you're getting someone that understands you both at a personal and a business level. And Tim, could you give us some top tips for good corporate governance to sum up? Really, I think it's important that if you're to go down this path and bring in independence, it's important that you recognise it as an investment. It's um, taking the time to prepare and to listen to the advice. It's um, making sure that you hold the board to account, making sure that they actually deliver, that you're getting value for money. If retaining the decision-making is important to you, then do consider an advisory board, in which case you're listening to the advice but it's your business and you're making the decisions. And then in terms of taking action from the board or the advisory board, that's fundamentally, they've got to take action, they've got to move. Exactly. It's, it's critically important that if you're going through this process, you're spending the money and the, making the investment, that you actually execute on this. Well, that's it from us today. Thank you, Mark. Pleasure. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Rebecca.